As a parent, wanting to protect your child from physical and emotional harm is a normal and a good thing. But when can, it, uh, when can that desire become a bad thing and lead you to bubble wrapping your child from life? And today we are joined once again by parenting coach Laura Markovitz to offer some guidance around this topic. Laura, lovely to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, yes, so overprotective parenting, bubble wrapping your child. <laughs> I think it's something that it can happen so naturally and organically because, I mean, as a parent, you want to protect your child from everything that goes on uh, in the outside world, from social media to friends to school. There's so much. But bubble wrapping your child, yeah. being an overprotective parent, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, you know, exactly. It's, you know, it's counterintuitive for us to say, <laughs> yeah. step back, don't protect your child. Yeah. But when we're stepping in and we are overprotecting, when we are hovering, when we are micromanaging <laughs> absolutely everything of our children's childhoods, yeah. then we are overstepping the mark. When we're stepping in and we are talking to the teacher when they've got a bit of an upset, when we are interfering with the coaches, when we're not letting them climb the tree, when we're doing things like that, that we are stopping them from living their lives because we are micromanaging everything, yeah. well, then we are overstepping the mark. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you talk about things like climbing trees and these kind of things. Naturally, with a young child, I mean, if I take a look at my boy now, he's five years old, and when he does something like this, I mean, my, my heart literally goes, you know, and it's, but it's easy for me to restrain. I think the, the mom has got a, a, a more difficult time to, to you know, to, to step back and let go, which, which is very difficult. But how can something like this have a negative impact on your child's well-being, emotionally, also growing up? Yeah, well, if we're doing it and if we're stepping in at every single second, we are robbing our kids of the opportunity to learn, to grow, yeah. to fall off the tree and realize, well, hopefully not fall from a dizzy height. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fall off the tree. Look, look, you're going to step in at some point. So. <laughs> so, but to be able to fall, to be able to know that I can fall, I can fail, I can get into the B team, I can get into um, yeah. not do so well in my exam, I can make mistakes and I can get back up again. Yeah. So if we're not doing that, then we, and we're seeing it more and more with kids going into the workplace, um, going into universities yeah. and struggling because they lack basic life skills to be able to manage things yeah. for themselves. Failure, They're they have not, to learn how to deal. Absolutely, yeah. interpersonal skills, um, being able to manage their own time, all those sorts of things that kids are struggling if we're not allowing them the opportunity yeah. to actually learn. So taking a look at the parents, how can it be helpful for parents to really get to the root of, if you are an overprotective parent, uh, to recognize it and, and also yes. manage it going forward? I mean, how do you step out of that bubble yourself yeah. as a parent? Well, I think it's quite helpful. And as you say, it's really helpful to go, well, what am I doing? And I think, you know, we've yeah. got to start from the premise that it's not coming from a lack of care and love. It comes from a good place. But it's often helpful for us to go, hang on, where is this coming from? because then we're able to manage it better yeah. and not project it onto our kids. So for a lot of parents, it's often a big fear-based factor of perceived negative consequences. So it's things like, well, what happens if he does fall from that tree? He's going to break his leg and not be able to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. What happens if he uh, doesn't do well in the exams? He's not going to be able to get into university, boom, 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 boom. Um, what happens if she yeah. doesn't make it into the team? What happens if she doesn't get invited yeah. to the party? So we kind of go down a very negative yeah. trajectory. So it can help be helpful to think about what are our fears. Yeah. And then also it's helpful to think, what was our own experience of parenting? Yeah. You know, are we trying to emulate how we were parented? parented yeah. Or are we trying to totally step back and think, sure, my parents were completely uninvolved or my parents were over-involved? So that can yeah. have an impact on us it's as well. It's tough, Laura. It's tough because as a parent, you, you really just want the best for your kids. Yeah. you know. But sometimes the best, what you think is the best, might not be the best in the long run. Yeah. But we're going to be talking about this. This is a big topic. Thank you very much for joining us, Laura. Overprotective parenting. We'll be back with Laura in just a bit. It's my feel good Welcome back. You're tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express, all right here on SABC3. So good to be hanging out with you on your Wednesday morning. Now it's back to parenting right now. And early on, we spoke about overprotective parenting or bubble wrapping your child and the negative effects it can have on your child. We're continuing with that conversation right now with our certified parent coach, Laura Markovitz. Laura, thank you very much once again for joining us. So um, I think just to recap, 
um, quickly of what he spoke about earlier. I think uh, how can parents better navigate that line between being a good protective parent and an overprotective parent? Yeah, I mean, it's always hard to find that sweet spot. But yeah. I think if we can think about what we are trying to do, which is use the opportunity while our kids are children to teach them life skills. That's what's yeah. actually happening. And then when we try to meet that sweet spot is to think about, we're not trying to leave them high and dry. Okay, go off, um, sort yourself out. I'm not supporting you. It's rather going, I'm going to support you in order to grow yeah. your independence. So I'm going to set things up that will help you learn yeah. how to do things. And I think that can be helpful in terms of guiding us um, in how we do things. So it's not necessarily stepping in immediately to sort things out. When they've had a fight with a friend, to ask them how they yeah. think they can sort it out. When something's gone wrong with a teacher or a coach, or even when they're going to visit a, a doctor to get them to speak up about what's going on for them, mm. as opposed to me stepping in immediately and, taking and covering over. all the bases. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's hard, I think, for a parent to, to let go, so to speak. You know, especially we spoke about the fact that you know, yeah. if, if they climb a tree, you know, don't be there. Let them, let them have their little mistakes. So, so bring me on to the next topic, failures and disappointments. I mean, uh, you're going to have to let your child go through that as a parent. You can't always protect them. But why can that be a good thing for them at the end of the day? Because it's life. And if we're setting them up for oh, real, <laughs> for reality, is we're going to fall. There mm. are going to be disappointments. So we've got to, while they are children, support them in learning to get through those disappointments yeah. and not be crushed by them because they are inevitable. And if you look at any of the people that you consider to be successful in the world, and we've got different, um, you know, who we think is successful, but if you look at any of them, from the Steve Jobses of the world to the Thomas Edisons yeah. of Cre all of them have had failures on the way to getting to that point. They've had to fail and they've had to learn from their failures, look at what's gone wrong and how they can improve things. Mm -hmm. So as much as it's difficult and we want to be protecting our yeah. kids, if we use them as opportunities yeah. to learn and grow from the failures or the disappointments, they can be really good opportunities, and he's back on his he's bike. Back on his bike, <laughs> and we love that because you know we're talking about. So essentially, you don't want to prevent disappointments and failures, but it's really all about how you manage them. So how yeah. can we do that to turn that kind of disappointing moment or maybe that failure into a positive? Uh, from you as a parent, what do you need to do, and how to how do you facilitate that? So I think first of all, when it happens, when there has been a big disappointment, or when things haven't gone according to plan and how we want them to go is to first of all do a little check-in with ourselves of what's happening for us or, you know, as we spoke yeah. about earlier, is this fear-based, that sort of thing, so that we're not projecting that onto our kids. And then it really is supporting them, going, you know, this, it does suck yeah. that you didn't get into the team. It yeah. is hurtful that that happens, so that we can hold them in the pain that they're going through before we go mm. into immediate fix-it mode and problem-solving yeah. mode but rather getting them to think about what's happened, yeah. what they feel about it, and then moving on to thinking, okay, yeah. how can you sort this out? Let them how deal with the emotion for a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we can go into actually for them to evaluate how they can do it differently next time and what they can learn from what went wrong. Absolutely. I always say it. Parents, we have a tough job. Thank you very much, Laura, for joining us this morning. Bubble wrapping your child, that's our subject. If you have any comments or questions, or maybe um, you can share a piece of advice, you could do so on our social media pages, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3, with that hashtag, Expresso Show.